we'll have a uh, we'll host uh, uh, another speaker who will talk about the personalized the the personalized banking uh, experience with the banking experience canvas. It will be Dasana Vichesekara from uh, uh, WSO2 who uh, who does a solution architecture there. Hello, Dasana. How are you? Hey, Midi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm doing well. Doing well. So if you have slides, uh, glad to. Uh, uh, have you sharing them on the third button below our two pictures? Okay, sure. I'm sure your screen. Yeah. Yep. And if you go full screen for a presentation, that's perfect. You have 25 minutes uh, on stage. Uh, enjoy the sana. Okay, thank you. So, um, hi everyone. Good afternoon. So I hope you guys are having a good time and enjoying the um, the important discussions, ideas, and excited by uh, these ideas. Um, so I'm going to um, I'm keep I'm going to keep that excitement live by introducing uh, a new way of banking, uh, which we call as Banking Experience Canvas. So um, yeah, so a little bit of me. So I am Dasana, and I'm a solution architect at WSO2. So I have been in in industry around 17 years, and I'm working on uh, open APIs, uh, API strategy, and open banking compliance in Australia, New Zealand, uh, Singapore, uh, uh, Asia, and uh, uh, recently with uh, Mexico and Brazil. Um, so let's uh, start the discussion looking at what uh, what does banking really mean? Uh, what are the interactions that we perform with banks? Um, if you look at what banks do or what kind of interaction that we do with banks, banks basically manage value. Uh, banks are our trusted partners. Uh, they have built their trust um, you know, historically and they, are, they manage value on behalf of us. So we have, you know, multiple sources of uh, value, and uh, they can be periodic value um, sources, like you know, income from salary, or it can be, um, you know, one-time um, value sources. And these value can be coming from, you know, cross-border payments, like uh, across uh, geographical and and financial boundaries. When it comes to value, the value can be in different forms. Uh, value can be money, uh, value can be you know precious metals, it can be government bonds, it can be rewards. So what banks does is banks um, accumulate this value behalf of you and manage and track. And what you do is like when you have your value repository, you may spend part of that value in your day-to-day -day spending. You will grow your value by investing value on you know different um, investment mechanisms, and you might um, you know uh, save part of that value for your uh, future needs as as insurance. So banks provide different channels for moving value. Uh, they provide cards. They provide you know bank transfer. They provide checks. They provide you know different kinds of channels. The most important thing that banks provide is the insight, insight around the different transactions happening around your value, value store, uh, the way that, uh, that you interact with each of these channels. Those are the insight that banks provide. So this is the basically uh, the, the, the uh, interaction that we perform against banks and what banks provide. And if you look at um, your needs, right? So, uh, so I, I, I let's say I do have a need to build my own house, right? Do re do banks really um, provide the full coverage of your need? Um, not really, right? So we bring banks uh, to the picture when when we need funding, when we need some investment options, uh, not. To fulfill the entire need, so bank would be part of, uh, you know, one step or one or two steps of your uh, multiple steps in achieving your need, right? 
but of course banks can do more because uh, banks in a are uh, you know competing in a very competitive market so in order to thrive and in order to um, acquire new customers or keep your customers bank has to look at this need uh, not really look at one or one or two steps of that need so if you look at um, an example where uh, let's say you want to buy a house you want to own your own home uh, there are multiple steps so you will be looking at um, you know multiple funding option what are the options you have uh, probably a home loan or use equity and then you will look at your investment options and then you look at you know you will look for properties you will check the property catalogs you will speak to different property agents and then you look at the value of these properties and how you value evaluate perform valuation against these properties and then you will look at your legal aspect you know, what are the legal challenges that you have uh, in these properties uh, what are the legal boundaries so there are multiple steps and um, some of these steps like you know uh, funding option and investments are provided by uh, traditional banks so that is the the, uh, the the standard banking space but there are other steps in achieving your needs so for other steps you will be going for other institution third parties right so this is a fragmented experience in achieving your need so what banks can do is banks can expand from their traditional boundary into other steps of your need through a partner ecosystem so banks can uh, build its partner ecosystem it can be outside of the bank in domain uh, by you know attracting partners you can the bank can provide um, in the services and capabilities which allow um to uh, allow customers to meet the need so let's look at how we can build that um, ecosystem around the bank so the the the, the proven uh, way of building that ecosystem is through open apis and open banking so open banking standardize the interaction between different parties in banking ecosystem using open pay, uh, apis so it reduces friction and it it increases efficiency in collaboration and you know create aggregation capabilities and at the end it provide freedom uh, for the customer to choose so by you know leveraging these capabilities uh, like you know open apis api capability within the open banking ecosystems bank can bring this uh, partners together and pro provide additional capability on top of standard banking uh, capabilities so now let's look at uh, how consumers um, engage with banks um, if you look at um, current trends or current world right so we we rarely visit uh, bank branches and we see that um, you know banks which Uh, operate without branches full digital banks uh, on the rise so uh, people engage with banking or do banking on their digital devices uh, especially if you look at um, millennials the younger generations uh, if you look at us 30% of the population are millennials and if you look at the world it's 2/5 of the population are millennials young people so they are on the device they are always connected and and they are on social media right so people want that social media experience and they do banking on the uh, on the device and you don't need to be uh, you need you don't need to have a smartphone and if you look at a, a, a solution like mpesa in kenya right uh, in kenya the um, mpesa is, is a, a payment mechanism and, and Uh, people use uh, not so smartphones in remote parts of the kenya to um, you know um, do payments so so people are on on devices and they they, they have different uh, you know ways of interacting with uh, banking you know people get paid uh, people want um, their paychecks two days earlier so they want their money on 
their time. Um, they, they look at split payments. So these are the different products that are on the market. And especially younger generations want support in saving. And people want to uh, make different moves um, on, with their money and invest on in a different kinds of uh, investment options. And, and, and if you look at this experience, uh, banks provide more intuitive focus uh, tools as well, like you know, saving calculators, uh, mortgage calculators, uh, personal finance management tools, and things like that. Uh, so, so people are on digital channels. People engage. Um, you know, people have personal engagement on these these kind of um, you know tools. So, with banking experience canvas. Uh, what we are trying to do here is like we want to bring that uh, the ability to handle the need in its entirety and provide a digital experience in making that uh, need or building that need. Um, so banking experience canvas is a digital canvas and we provide different building blocks in building your need. That's what uh, banking experience canvas is. So there are a um, set of um, uh, key concepts that you need to understand uh, to uh, uh, digest what banking experience canvas means. So on banking experience canvas, you only have a single value store. So value store is a um, representation of your bank account. Um, so you don't have uh, multiple accounts like you know saving accounts, uh, checking accounts, everyday accounts, nothing like that. You only have single value store where you store value. And um, what you can do is uh, you partition your value store into multiple jars or pots or buckets. And how you fill those jars is up to you. You can design. Uh, you can come up with uh, your own idea of how to fill those pots. Um, it can be dynamic, it can be static. And once you have these pots, you build an experience around these pots or buckets. Uh, it can be a saving experience, it can be an investment experience. Um, it depends uh, on you, how you want to build your experience. And these experiences will um, you know, react to external events, maybe notification, maybe um, you know, events coming from uh, intelligent analytics, um, AI. And that experience provide a unique behavior on top of these, uh, the experience that you have, you're building. So these are the key concepts behind the uh, banking experience uh, canvas. Uh, this is a kind of illustration how uh, you could um, see the banking experience canvas in real world. Um, so this is a desktop uh, or, or, or web, uh, or uh, you can see it on, on, on tap. So what you have is a service palette. So you'll have different capabilities from the bank and as well as uh, capabilities from uh, outside of the bank. So what you do is you bring these uh, individual capabilities onto the canvas and you build your experience. Uh, so this is your value store and value store can be identified uh, using uh, international banking account number or it can be a username, it can be a QR code, it can be attached to an email, it can be attached to a form. So this is the identifier uh, this is the way that you uh, define your identity and you can attach different income sources into value store. And then what you do is you kind of partition your value store into different pots, like, you know, savings and bills. And then you build um, the experience by dragging and dropping these different service capabilities into the canvas. And... Um, so this is how you build your experience on the canvas. And you can start from the scratch or you can use templates and you can use, modify those templates and build your um, experience. And if it, is, uh, if it looks cumbersome, you can use a chatbot 
and there are uh, there, there, there are different capabilities that we will be providing on canvas that can be used to build this experience and you can share your um, experiences and you can you know use forum to chat and understand how what are the capabilities available and things like that so this service palette is uh, is where you, the bank can provide different capabilities within within the bank and as well as the capabilities that are coming from your partners um, so um, can canvas can be used for business as well um, especially uh, um, small and medium enterprises so what happens is um, the small and business small businesses would like to um, kind of focus on their businesses and uh, outsource their day-to-day uh, -day activities into bank and bank provide different capabilities on the canvas so the business can build their business behavior on the canvas so it can banks can provide payment services you know export import services uh, forex trading card management uh, you know uh, understanding patterns of your consumers and, and and you know different capabilities right so what the business can use uh, embedded banking so what happens is these capabilities the business capabilities will be embedded within your business function and it automatically um, connects with uh, the ba business banking experience and have that data flow into the bank and provide these capabilities so all of these interactions are happens through apis and will be happening in the background so this is what the uh, capabilities that can be provided uh, on the business canvas and um, so if you look at how we would enable this uh, canvas what are the technological building blocks that we would use um, in building this um, canvas so canvas is a, a single page application or a mobile application that is facing the customer and there will be a set of layers underneath the canvas a event bus and a service mesh and these layers would be using uh, the services and um, so probably you remember that uh, on the canvas we we had a, a service pellet and that service pellet is uh, is basically a catalog of uh, services so these services are provided by the bank or the fintechs the partners you know different value added services providers uh, so bank can provide a api marketplace and these service providers can onboard uh, those services as apis onto the api marketplace so you the bank needs to provide uh, the um, bank uh, the onboarding processes and you know different um, business models monetization models on the api marketplace so the um, partners can provide those capabilities as services on the api marketplace and then uh, you can build uh, api catalog and then you can um, use multiple APIs to build API products or you can use single APIs um, based on your need and you expose those capabilities on the service pillar and open banking provides a way of standardizing this interaction um, and, and bank can play uh, data recipient and data holder like both roles and since this is a rich internet uh, application so eventing is important so you need to have a eventing bridge and uh, establishes um, you know interaction uh, with the user and the banking experience that you build using you know building blocks uh, uh, is actually a workflow the the underlying concept is a workflow so um, you need these building blocks together and build a workflow and workflow um, you know look up different APIs, services, and, and build the experience. And analytics is very important, the real and real-time analytics. 
um, because it provides uh, uh, improvements and understand patterns of customer in engagement. And uh, the other uh, important element is identity. So you should be able to provide identity capabilities from multi-factor to adaptive authentication, the federation capabilities, because um, uh, you know dif there are different identities available in, in different silos. So you should be able to bridge those identities and support mul multiple identity mechanisms. Um, and 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 uh, you can provide machine learning and you know a semantic business layer on top of your uh, persona-driven warehouse. Um, so these are the key elements that enable um, uh, open, uh, banking experience canvas. And um, as WS2, we provide um, you know the um, API capability, the integration capability, and the um, analytical capability, which enables building out this um, uh, banking experience canvas. Yeah. So with this, um, I'm ending my session and thank you very much for uh, participation. Yeah, thank you very much, Dasana. Uh, I, have, I have one question directly. Uh, how do you manage this canvas, this banking experience canvas as a team? How do you integrate it into maybe, I don't know, uh, whatever Scrum or Agile methodologies? Uh, like who are the person involved in, into that canvas? Yeah, so uh, this canvas is actually built by the customer. Um, what bank provides is the, the interaction and the uh, tool set uh, on the canvas. And um, how the banking engineering team would engage here is like they will basically make these services available on the services palette, and as well as uh, they provide uh, they will look at, they will build analytical models on on data that is being kind of, you know, uh, accumulated and, and, and provide, um, you know, um, analytical information or patterns to improve the interaction on the canvas. Um, yeah. Um, was that useful? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, one last question. Uh, what is what is the impact you see in development of banking experience using that canvas? Do you have any stories of customers who have implemented it uh, and changed their way of building uh, uh, banking applications? Yeah. So uh, we have seen uh, uh, some banks uh, looking at building this kind of interaction model, like a, a holistic interaction model, looking at, um, uh, you know, looking at the need of the customer, uh, bringing in different capabilities. So uh, I have been involved in a uh, few banks in Australia, uh, which want to build this kind of interaction model. So basically uh, with the open banking initiatives, uh, the co consumer data rights in Australia, um, you know, in, in Australia, the consumer data right run across banking, telecommunication, uh, logistics. It is across all the uh, industry domains. Uh, so we can bring those capabilities, uh, like, you know, different capabilities outside of banking and provide that um, uh, the holistic experience, um, uh, building the need. Um, so I'm working with multiple banks, uh, enabling them uh, to provide that um, service capability to build that uh, canvas. Yeah, and uh, so can can yeah. Now I, I was asking, we, we're on what, what website uh, we can find it? Um, uh, especially on Big Four. Um, I will share those uh, links with you. Okay, thank you very much. We will share it to everybody. Thank you very much, Tasana. Uh, that was really insightful. Uh, some some feedbacks in the chat about the, how the presentation was great. Uh, thank you very much. 